Hello, hello and welcome. My name is Philip. We are here at 64 Audio doing some more unboxing and product review stuff. Um, today we'll be unboxing and talking about U4S, a new product of ours. If this is your first time interacting with 64 Audio, hearing of us, you know, coming up on this video, we are a universal and custom fit in-ear monitor manufacturer. We're based in Vancouver, Washington. All of our products are built here using components from all over the world, but it is, you know, folks just downstairs here who are building all of these. We make custom in-ear monitors ranging from cost-effective tools like A2E all the way up to, you know, reference grade studio monitors like the 18S and 18T, you know, all ranging from $500 to $3,000 and in our universal lineup, we make nine models of universal fitting in-ear monitors. And folks from, you know, professional musicians, audio engineers, gamers, and audiophiles, general music enthusiasts, all use our products to get closer to their music or get closer to the sound that they're looking for. With everything we make, we try to get a musical, natural, balanced sounding product. Um, and that's kind of true for really everything in our product range. U4S is our lowest cost universal in-ear monitor at the moment. Previously, it was Duo. I guess we'll have to edit that out of the Duo video. <laughs> um, now that there is a new product in town that kind of beats it out at $1,100 or $1,099. It's a four driver universal in-ear monitor. It's a four-way crossover as well. So lows, low mids, high mids, and highs are all taken care of separately by their own drivers. Um, it is also a hybrid IAM, so it utilizes two different types of drivers. The low frequency band is handled by a dynamic driver, or in the case of the high frequency band, it's handled by our patented TIA driver. Just go over some of the quick specs of them. The frequency response ranges from 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Sensitivity is 107 dB at 1 kilohertz. Um, and then the impedance is measured at 11 ohms. And the impedance is relatively linear across the spectrum because of our linear impedance design um, or LID. It's one of our patented piece of technology. And it comes with a variety of different apex modules that will allow you to change the noise isolation. So you get everything from minus 20 dB all the way down to minus 10 dB of noise isolation, depending on how much um, pressure relief you're wanting, how much low frequency attenuation you want, and of course, how much ambient noise isolation you're looking for. We'll get into the apex modules in a bit because there's a cool little announcement with U4S. To get to the product, here it is. It's that standard packaging that you'll see in other products like Duo, U6T, and Neo, the kind of slimmer box. Our more flagship monitors like 12T all the way up to Forte you can use a slightly larger box. Um, but this is U4S. We got the back side here with that exploded wireframe view. I'll give the folks above me a different perspective. There's that wireframe. Um, and you can always scan the QR code for more information. It'll take you directly to the product page here. And let's take a look at that as well. So right off the bat, you'll notice something fairly different with U4S in that it is a pretty big color departure from the rest of our products. And you know, we'll get a bit more into that once we open it up and take a look. So U4S is the universal fitting counterpart to A4S. A4S is the custom version that we made in 2021. And you'll see that across the range of products, everything, you know, like U6T, U12T, U18T, a couple others, there is a custom version of it. Other than the insertion depth, it's really an identical IEM. You know, they don't sound identical, you know, one person putting on the customs versus the universals. And, you know, I'm speaking from experience here, they don't sound the same. And it's mainly insertion depth. It's the type of tips you're using, all that stuff. It's the way that the physical body of the IEM, it's coupling with the physical structure of your ear. All of those components go into the slight variations in the sound. 
but they're relatively similar. You know, if you listen to the demo of the U4S or the demo of the A4S, it'll sound like the universal U4S. So let's crack it open. Slide this off. We got our standard small magnetic box and inside we have U4S. One cool thing that we're introducing with U4S is this harder plastic cable winder thing. I don't know if we have an official word for it yet, but it looks kind of cool. It's like black on black. It's got the here feel create on there. Our black leather case, which comes with all of our IMs and then the Oops, the assorted tips right there. All of our IMs come with these three variations of tips in three different sizes. We've got our True Fidelity foam tips, which is a custom blend specifically made for us that fits our you know preferences and sound quality uh, requirements. We've got the wide nozzle kind of low profile silicone tips which go all the way down to the end of the ear canal of, of the IM the stem I guess is is what we call it and that will give you kind of the intended frequency response without any sort of changes and then we also offer the spin fit tips which they make for us in this nice kind of darker black color but they still have the color um, indicators for the sizes as well. So all come in small, medium, and large. Based on your preferences when it comes to comfort and um, sound, you have really three different tuning types here with just with the ear tips. And we'll kind of get more into that with the Apex modules. Of course, you have the cleaning tools, the cleaning tool, sorry, here, and the shirt clip. The shirt clip is used more in professional kind of live music settings to, you know, keep the IEMs attached to the person's shirt so that it doesn't rip off them if they, you know, turn their head too hard. But for folks using our universal in-ear monitors, whether it's audio files or just kind of general enthusiasts, I recommend folks to attach this to their cable and use it as a way to sort of decouple the cable. So you give it a little bit more slack up here closer to your head so that as you're moving your DAP around or you're moving your, your, your cable around, you're not gonna hear the microphonics as much from this end because it's sort of decoupled from itself. So I would still recommend using the shirt clip even though not generally used in this space. And then the Apex modules. So one really cool thing about U4S is that it comes with our new M12 module. I will do a super fast unboxing of it. Here, give this perspective. Super quick unboxing, the smallest box ever. Boom, these gold modules. This is M12. U4S is releasing with M12 as kind of an introductory sort of special thing. I think we'll see these on the website very soon as a as an accessory that you can purchase and hopefully as something that will come with some of our other universal IMs. It is for the folks who liked the M15 module and the MX module but wanted something in between, wanted something that didn't reduce the bass quite as much, didn't introduce quite as much um, ambient noise and so it felt like U4S was the perfect model to release it with. They pair really well together, tonally especially, and you know, it's something that kind of fills a really significant little place between M15 and MX. Because, you know, the difference in noise isolation between, let's say, M20, M15, and MX, they're all equal, but the amount of bass reduction between the bottom two, between M15 and MX, is fairly significant it's 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 more significant than the difference in bass response between m15 and m20 and so we wanted specifically for the bass response to fill that space in between and it really does i mean it's obviously you can measure it some folks will probably be measuring it out there but you'll see the differences in the low frequency response with m12 i will be showing you the the way that they come as intended here so the intended 
configuration of U4S is, not the intended, but the kind of standard configuration is the M15 modules along with the um, wide nozzle kind of lower profile silicone tips. Let's wrap this. And hopefully these come out nicely. We like to keep them snug. There we go. get the bottom of this case out too, just to show you guys. Montage. Leather case, uh, leather at case. It's not real leather. It's a, uh, uh, I believe, bonded leather. And the sticker is hiding under here. You got a sticker. Um, it's nice because it's it's a it's a rigid case, so it'll actually protect your IMs, and it's small enough to be able to throw into even a back pocket. But here it is, U4S. Now the color is something we coined to be slate blue. That's that's what we're calling it. It's you know it's not as deep and a rich blue as you know like a like the dragonfly cobalt, for example, that really bluey blue. This is a little bit colder, but more kind of intriguing blue. It's something that was inspired by some of our favorite uh, watches where, you know, some of us here are kind of watch nerds. And so things like the, um, you know, Patek Philippe's Nautilus 5711 in its standard blue, um, the AP Royal Oak in its standard blue, that, that really kind of iridescent looking blue tone that will give you a different perspective on the color based on your lighting conditions. And that's really true with U4S. That blue kind of comes through in different ways depending on what conditions you're in. So we're really excited about it. It's it's something that's striking enough in person in, in under certain lighting conditions, yet can be a little bit more um, subdued looking, a little bit stealthier in other conditions so that it's not like Forte Blanc, which you, know, you can see from a mile away. It's a little bit more understated. It's still more set apart than you know our previous set of releases a couple of years ago, and you'll kind of see this with our products where you know U18T and Forte came out. They had a similar design language with the copper faceplate and the our faceplate chip and the red and the orange kind of copper esque looking colors, and then U12T and Trio released simultaneously with the more brushed aluminum look. Neo is probably the most odd one out with the abalone faceplate. And then you have U18S, U16, and Duo all kind of sharing a similar design language with that more stealthy black kind of subdued look. So this is something really new for us, this blue shell. Really cool looking, anodized to get this color, of course, and it's milled out of solid aluminum as the rest of our universal any monitors are. The face plates are also really cool and similarly inspired by the world of watchmaking, and it is made to look like a fragment of meteorite. Now, of course, we couldn't get real meteorite for each one because it would make them cost, you know, 100 times more. We actually use a small piece of real meteorite in some of our marketing materials, and you'll notice in some of the videos, we try to make it look gigantic, but it's actually like this big. But it's made, what? Talk about how big it is again. <laughs> Talk about how, are you trying to get this like a yeah. meme? Yeah, yeah, great. We try to make that little fragment as, as big as possible, but it's actually fairly small and kind of ridiculously expensive. But we try to, we wanted it to have that look. So if you, you can't really see it from far away, but it has really kind of cool pattern underneath that logo. It's in kind of black and gray. So subtle, but really interesting to look at. And again, it reveals itself a little bit differently in different lighting conditions. Um, you got the 64 logo in silver on both sides. Obviously comes with our black premium cable, really low impedance cable, I believe 0.23 ohms, uh, silver plated copper. It's got a good feel to it, good gauge. It has really low microphonics. Um, people have been really liking this. Got that straight single ended uh, source end. Let's talk about the sound of U4S. Um, the way that I like to describe it and the way I've been describing it kind of in the building and to others is they sound 
agile and and lightweight like a like a really well built bookshelf speaker, something that is you know unencumbered by the the weight and the kind of slow nature of you know a, a, a large speaker that requires you know a lot of power and there's a lot of movement and you know stuff moving around kinetic energy stuff like that it feels light on its feet it feels agile um, but at the same time with that agility it feels like a bookshelf speaker with a well implemented subwoofer so you know it, as something that is deep reaches low low frequencies but it doesn't feel like those lows are interacting in a negative way with the rest of the frequency spectrum and i believe that is in part due to how low the low frequency rise starts it's not you know it's not extremely low where there's not really much body to the base there's still you know a decent amount of body to it but yet it just feels kind of not uncoupled from the low mids, but it leaves them kind of unencumbered with all of that low frequency energy. So yeah, that's that's my way of describing it. Hopefully that means something to you. It certainly does to me. That's kind of what I have in my home is um, a pair of bookshelf speakers with a really well implemented sub. And yeah, you got the agility, but you also have the, the depth and the weight that a sub adds. So that's what they sound like. Another thing that I really enjoy with U4S is it seems to play really well with every level of volume preference that I kind of put them through when testing. I would say that's probably the biggest factor to look at when you're reading a review when it comes to an audio product is at what volume the reviewer was actually listening. That will really play the biggest role in how they sound. You know, more than tips, more than cable, more than source is if you're listening to the product at a different volume than the reviewer was, you might be hearing something completely different. In my experience with U4S, as I kind of put them through the paces, it really sounds good at every volume level. You know, there's enough mid-range and upper mid-range energy there to be present. There's enough sizzle in the high end, enough bottom end to where if you turn down and you listen at really low volumes, it's still articulate and full sounding, but the mids aren't as forward so that it would sound kind of harsh or, you know, aggressive when you're turning it up and you listen at higher volumes. And the high end amplitude is also not so high as to sound sibilant or a little too kind of grainy when you turn up the volume. So. I, I really like that for these. There, you know, certainly can't say that for every product that I listen to. There's certain IEMs, even our IEMs, that I have kind of preference when it comes to how loud I listen to each one. These just do really great kind of all arounders. And similarly, they're great all arounders for different genres, different types of mixes. It just sits in between all of it. You know, it works well with modern recordings works well with old recordings pop music that sort of thing as i mentioned earlier all of the in-ear monitors that we make we aim at making them sound musical balanced and natural sounding so yeah if you want to kind of read more about the sound um, there's a few reviews coming out simultaneously with this as well as a blog post that will go into a little bit more detail you know with all of our products there's different levels of fidelity and re resolving power when it comes to the particular price point that you're in. And I think you probably couldn't find something with the driver configuration and the price point to really beat the resolving power of U4S in how it's designed. So it's really cool. So let's take a look at how they look on your head really quick. That'll be... I'm sure important for a lot of you. Here's what they look like on your head and your ears. Give you a nice preview. So they look like on a large head. Sorry, can't show you what they look like on a small head. There you go. There's a profile view of them. And yeah, like I said, from afar, they are a bit more unassuming, you know, compared to like U18T, Forte, um, Forte Blanc. Um, a little bit more subdued, the color isn't as striking, but in 
a close-up evaluation. And when you're looking at them personally or you're showing your friends, you know, it's a really great and it's a really interesting color. It's something fun to look at. So yeah, here is U4S. It's available now on our website. Our um, global dealer and distributor network has them as well. So go check it out in person. See, uh, see the kind of really interesting color in person and take a listen to them for yourselves, U4S.